Hi guys, uh, it's me, Mrs. McNicholas, here for day six of socially distanced science six for my hack at Hawks. Um, okay, so let's get rolling. Um, number one thing I wanted to tell you is if your phone or your parents' phone rings, and please let your parents know, um, and the number is unknown, we need you to pick up the phone. Please pick up the phone, guys. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday, Ian. Happy birthday. I'm so sorry that you have to have a socially distanced birthday, but um, hopefully we'll make up for it <coughs> when all this is said and done, right? So uh, I will dedicate today's episode specifically to you. Good job. Hi, guys. Um, okay. So remember, please pick up the phone. Tell your parents to pick up the phone if they see a number they don't know because we are calling all of our families. Um, I started yesterday. If you're in my first period, you will get a phone call most likely from me. You could also get a phone call from Ms. Lopez or Ms. Biscup. Um, but for most of you, it's going to be your first period teacher. Um, so we're not calling to talk about you, Amy. We're calling to um, ask you some questions from the district. We want to know, like, obviously you guys are online, um, but not everybody is. And some of you might be sharing a computer or, or a device with someone else in your house. So I think what we're trying to do is figure out who's got good internet, who's got a good device. Um, so we can make sure that everybody's getting all of the work and everything. So right now in the Google classroom, um, I've got about three quarters of everybody that I teach, uh, participating on a regular basis when it comes to online stuff. Um, don't worry, Javier, we're gonna, we have like multiple sources for numbers. Okay. So if I can't get a hold of you, I'll message you on the, on the uh, classroom and ask you to call me. Right. All right. That's very nice of you, Anya. Okay. So let's get rolling for today. That was number one. Okay. Number two. Oh, let me share. And guys, I need you guys to share like in the big hack of texting group that you guys have, or just your friends that you're texting that you haven't been seeing in Google Classroom or on any of the other platforms I've been trying to reach out on. Um, but you have their number or you know that they're on Snapchat or you know that they're on TikTok, please reach out to those kids so they start participating with the rest of us, okay? So here are some ways you can stay informed. I haven't really used the Reminds much this year, but it's always been there and I kind of geared up and started using it again. Cause let's face it, everybody looks at their text messages, right? So um, there's how you get onto the Hackett Science 6 Remind. You will text the message at Hackett S, that stands for Hackett Science, to the phone number 81010. And that will um, put you in a direct line for my text messages. If anyone is struggling to get on the Google Classroom, it's your student ID number. Don't type your student ID number like this. Type the actual five or six digit number that's on your ID um, at albany.k12.ny.us and you made your password up. You made your password up earlier this year. If you are stuck and you can't get on, um, let me know and I will talk to the guys up at the help desk and get your password reset, okay? because I know everything, everybody, you guys tell me everything or you talk too loud when you're near me and I eavesdrop on you. <laughs> it's the same reason I know who's going out with who, right? Right now, no one's going out with anybody. Right now we're socially distancing. I'm bored too, Javier, but my animal crossing is coming tomorrow between 10 45 and 1 45. So guys keep your fingers crossed, but then obviously, I don't know. I might have to wave goodbye to the cold, cruel world because I love that game. All right, let's move on. We're going to do, let's talk about what happened yesterday on the Zoom. So we tried to Zoom yesterday and it was a total disaster. It was a disaster. Now I have really good internet. Like we, we play games in this house, so we've got decent internet. And yes, my son was playing Final Fantasy online when I was trying to Zoom with you. So it got laggy. But once I got him off the computer and then we started, oh my God, Ian's so exciting. I hope you do. I hope you do. I don't have one yet. I, I got one just to, 
just to play Animal Crossing. So we'll see. Um, and that's a pretty safe game. Like that's a game I could play with everybody as opposed to some of the games that we play where we know we are not wholly appropriate when we are talking smack online, right? Like Gears and COD and all that stuff. Javier, have you been playing the uh, the Battle Royale on COD? I don't know, Gish. That's that's questionable. The way I've seen some of you rip tape off a tape dispenser, it has occurred to me that you may, in fact, reside under rocks. All right. <coughs> Okay, so here we go. So today, what I'm gonna try, like right after this YouTube video, I'm gonna try to do a Google Meet at noon, high noon, 12 o'clock. Okay, so what I'll do is I will post the link for the Google Meet in the Google Classroom. So you must be in the Google Classroom to get the link to join the Meet. I hope, okay, I hope, because right now all of this that's happening is a whole lot of hoping. All right, so I'm going to show you some things about waves that, you know, you can play around with. And if you have similar equipment at home, like maybe you can play around and, and do this at home. Now, the first object I'm going to show you, not too many people have in their house, right? But if you have any kind of a metal, I don't know, like one of those metal bars that people might use to like sharpen a kitchen knife or like even a metal barbecue skewer or a metal ruler, um, you should be able to recreate some of these things. I have no idea, Gabs. I was, originally they told us April 1st, but the, the way they're getting us ready, the teachers ready, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be that. And I know the surrounding districts are staying out until the Easter break is over. Um, and then of course, in the state of Virginia, they close school for the whole entire year. Uh, I don't know. So we have to keep an eye on the rate of infection, right? That curve. Now, New York State had a certain number of people sick last Friday. Um, and like in the, I'm sorry, not last Friday, not last Wednesday, I think. And in the matter of a week, our infection rates increased exponentially. 10 times more people infected than were infected seven days before. It's probably because we didn't socially distance ourselves in time. Um, and we didn't test enough people early on to find out who had it, to get them to kind of stay away from everybody else. So I cannot express enough for you. Yeah, Ian, I, I have to tell you, if New York State's infection rate doesn't slow down soon, tell your mom, like, my best science teacher educated guess is that that would be the case. And I would be absolutely heartbroken because, because I miss you guys. Right. So maybe we can, there's a meme going around about, um, we better have like the biggest, uh, Cinco de Mayo Memorial day, 4th of July party ever. So let's see. Right. So the plan is to do a Google Meet. Again, you must be logged into the Google Classroom so that I can get send you the link. I will put the link out in the classroom as soon as I'm done here. All right, so here we go. You know what, can I tell you something? I've been home since last, I haven't left the house in eight days. And eight days ago, I only left to go run to the UPS store to get something um, that I had to pick up. And everybody there was like wearing gloves and masks. And before that, the, I wasn't out since the weekend food shopping. And I am absolutely out of my skull, out of my skull board, especially since we got six inches of snow yesterday and I couldn't even like go walk the dog anywhere or anything. At least here by where I live, we're not all close together. So I can go outside, but it's like, then I go outside and I like stare at other people's houses. There's like legit nothing going on. Um, yeah, that's my plan, Javier, if the friggin' snow melts, right? It's like I said, we got like six inches yesterday. All right, I'm going to get going. Hey, Aaron. All right, so I told you, any long um, metal solid one-piece object will work. So this object is called a tuning fork, right? And tuning forks come in different lengths, and we use them for musical. Originally, I think they were used for musical purposes, right? Because you can play a musical note with a tuning fork, right? So if you don't have a tuning fork, Um, 
Amy, I don't see how they could penalize you for stuff that's going on beyond all our controls. Okay. So, uh, I can't imagine that they would do that. It would just be a shame because you know that being together in the science lab and doing these things together is a lot more effective than me showing you. So that's why I'm telling you, okay, I'm getting to work now. Okay. I'm not going to answer your questions right now. Just sit tight. Long solid metal object. You can use a metal ruler. Like I told you, like they make these long metal things that you can sharpen your kitchen knife on. Maybe you have a metal barbecue skewer in your house. Um, what if you try to recreate this, just make sure you're not using something sharp. I actually have a metal straw. I'm not hundred percent sure if that would work, but we can try it. Okay. But I'm going to stick with the tuning fork for now. So, um, if you have a tuning fork, you want to strike it off of something rubbery, right? So usually I teach kids in the classroom to use the bottom of the shoe, but I'm using this rubber trivet, this silicone trivet. Okay. So watch and listen. So be really quiet. The tuning fork did not meow. That was my other cat. You met the fat old cat that's going to be 18. I have a second cat. She's black. She has extra toes. Her name is Bastet. Her picture's all over my Instagram, but she's meowing. I don't know why. Boredom. Okay, one more time. So you should have noticed that there's a sound and obviously my hand's not jiggling, but this is. And when I stop it, boom, the sound stops. It's not your ears. It's me. Okay. So let's try this shorter one and see if it sounds a little different. You ready? All right, so I can't really see this one moving, right? But I can hear it. I hope you can too. Wait. Okay, so could you guys hear that one? You guys should be listening. Cameron, you are correct. So I want you to look, see if you could see this number. Can you guys see that number? 426 and two thirds. And the longer one says 128. That is literally how many cycles per second, the frequency of this tuning fork. Now for a tuning fork, a cycle is this, right? One cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles. So that means that this is going back and forth 128 times per second. If you're a musician, it plays a C note, right? This one goes back 426 and two thirds times per second. What do you even mean? How's that even possible? Javier, you guys that are spamming, cut it out or I'm shutting off the chat. Cause you're not listening. All right. Now I can't see this one moving, but I can hear it. I can see this one moving and I can hear it. So I think I need to prove to you that the short one's really moving. You ready? All right. I got to move the camera and I got to tilt it down. If they're annoying you, don't look at the chat. Okay. All right. So this is my official science six at home bowl of water. That was very Bill Nye-ish of me. All right, now keep a close eye on the water. Close eye, you ready? Here we go. Did you guys see that? I should probably cover my keyboard because I don't know if you saw that, but the water splashes, all right? Watch, I'll do it. Whoa, I just spilled water. Okay, watch. I'll do it again. One more time. 
Oh, that one stunk. Now, initially you'll see a little bit of a splash, but I want you to stare at the water after the splash is over. If you look really closely, you may be actually able to see the sound waves as they transfer from the tuning fork to the water, to the new medium. You can see the energy traveling through. Okay, let's try it again. Did you see that? I'm literally splashing water on everything that I own. Let's try the big one for effect. <gasps> I'm literally pouring water all over my dining room table because I'm so excited. Let's try it one more time because it's a bigger splash. I know, it's so cool. No, you can't see sound waves as they travel through the atmosphere, right? Through gases that are already invisible to us. But at least if you transfer something that's making a sound into the water, you may be able to see it. And tuning forks are really good for that. Really, all it's doing is transferring from one being one type of a mechanical wave to another type of a mechanical wave. And that's called energy transfer. And that's a whole other branch of science. And I'm not supposed to treat, teach you anything new. All right. I got one more thing to show you with my amazing tuning forks. I've built something for you. Moving you back. Totally wet table. Time to eat a pretzel. All right. I built you this amazing ping pong ball frame of science. Dun, dun, dun. Yay! Okay. So all I did was take this small loom frame that I have that I got on sale at AC Moore when they were shutting down because I always wanted to loom something, but I haven't gotten to it yet. And behold my official ping pong ball of science. Okay. So watch this. You ready? Starting with the big tuning fork. I hope this works. I did test it. Just remember to duck, okay? I am not moving my hand, all right? So I'll show you a side view so you can see that again. One more time. I know, I'm totally amusing myself right now. Very good, Cameron. All right, let's try a smaller one. Okay, so that one is moving too, even though it's moving so quickly, 426 and two thirds cycles per second, we can't see it because the frequency is too high. But there's your evidence. All right, guys. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, let me show you what's happening inside the ball to make it actually bounce. I guess I can do that for you, except I wet all the paper. All right, so the tuning fork. Ooh, that did not come out too bad, considering you know who is drawing it. The tuning fork, my screen is all wet and has drops of water on it. So I hope you guys can see this. So what happens is the tuning fork is moving back and forth very, very quickly. And when it hits the inside, when it hits the ball, because the ball is hollow, the energy travels around the surface of the solid material, right? But at the same time, 
it's traveling inside the ball. Some of that energy travels inside the ball to the other side on the inside of the ball. Now, you guys already know that mechanical waves travel faster through solids than liquids, right? So that's what's happening to the ball. And it causes the ball to go this way. And then you'll see like kind of a decrease for two reasons. A, the energy that travels on the outside of the ball starts working against the energy that's traveling on the inside of the ball. And also the frequency of the tuning fork is starting to slow down. So you don't have to actually know that. So don't worry. But I figured if you were asking or curious, I would kind of give you the short oversimplified version. All right. So I'm going to say goodbye. Um, and we are going to try a Google meet. I'm going to post the link in the classroom in five minutes. Yeah. Zoom was awful. So that's why we're not using it. We're going to try Google meet today. Um, and hopefully that'll work and I'll see you there. Okay. We're really just testing it out, like to see what we can use once we get to move forward with all this online learning. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to share the information with the kids that might not be online, okay? And I will see you in the Google Meet. Bye.